just wanna love like any other What do I get? I only wanna bend the stay to the end What do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? Yeah, I was introduced to uh, Pete Shelley and uh, Howard Devoto by Malcolm McLaren. Uh, I was sort of stood outside the Free Trade Hall and uh, he sort of wrote me in off the streets and introduced me to the pair of them. Um, and, um, you know, I was arranging to meet someone else, but uh, I met them and uh, we had this rehearsal from there, you know, and, uh, you know, there was just this racket, this sort of runaway train. Um, because we were all sort of playing through one amp. Um, it's just a noise, but a, you know, it's a really exciting noise. It sort of um, excited my veins, you know. It was the best drug you could ever get, really. It was something I'd been looking for all my life, you know. And um, f from there, you know, it, it, it just develops, really. First gig was July 20th, 1976. We played at Lesser Free Trade Hall with the Six Pistols. And uh, we played around and we played on the White Riot Tour. Uh, with the clash and then we got signed to emi on the day elvis presley died august the 16th 1977. then from then it was into the studio our first single was uh, uh orgasm addict and uh but we didn't get much radio play but then again we never expected it to do and then we recorded what do i get which was like a more of a definitive buzzcock song i think in terms of like it it, it became what buzzcocks were known for these sort of you know, tuneful songs with, uh, you know, that noisy sort of guitar background and stuff. The uh, record company thought it'd be a good idea if people could see these boys play rather than having to go to a punk gig and be spat upon. And so they showed us into uh, the ITN studios in Wells Street and before the one o'clock news we rattled off, what do I get? I'm in distress, I need a caress, what do I get? No, I'm gonna make I just need a break, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? Oh, what do I get? I only get sleepless nights alone here in my heart. The end is in the time I try. So I wish that only happened to me instead. What do I get? Oh, what do I get? What do I get? On Top of the Pops, for the first time, we did I Don't Mind, which was a big excitement for all of us, because Top of the Pops was what every person aspired to, and that was like the pinnacle of the career at the time. It was like, but that's when you were really, you know, a star, when you were on Top of the Pops. So we went there, and uh, it was good going into the BBC bar and rubbing shoulders with uh, all the uh, news readers who were there having a tipple before they went on to do the nine o'clock news. And uh, there was... Um, but before we, uh, Top of the Pops actually 
that happens, you go through countless run-throughs, and then they wheel in the audience, and then they tell the audience when to clap and not to stare at the cameras and not to, uh, to you know, to make fools of themselves, or, th or they'll be chucked out. But it really did seem phony, and it was a difficult thing to do at the time, considering like we were, um, you know, a sort of punky band that were playing in clubs and halls and stuff. And uh, I did question, is it a valid thing to do? Um, but in another way, I thought, well, it adds to the programme and hopefully, you know, would sort of change things in some way. It's better seeing a band like Buzzcocks, you know, or uh, other bands that were around at the time, like the Jam or something, rather than seeing all the, the, the dross that was on. So if we could hog the scene, that was fair enough, you know. So, you know, as long as you, you know, give Top of the Pops a kick in the face, then it's fine. Buzzcocks, thank you. Reality's a dream A game in which I seem to never find out Just what I am, I don't know if I'm an actor or hell, a shaman or sham But if you don't mind Just makes me feel you're putting me down And if it's true, it's pathetic clown But keep hanging around, that's if you don't mind Just lying in my bed I think you've got it in for me Is it all in my head? Is it in my head? When it comes me When everything I see Just makes me feel You're pulling me down And if it's true This pathetic clown Who keep hanging around That's if you don't mind I was a member afterwards, after doing Top of the Pops. I felt very deflated because, but there I was, I went back to the hotel and I was in there in the hotel room and I had to wash my socks in the sink. And I thought, surely somebody must be washing my socks by now, now that I'm a star. Round about on the second anniversary of uh, Buscott's first gig on July the 20th, 1976, we did uh, a TV special for Granada TV called Ba Dum Ba Dum. Uh, it was filmed at uh, the Lesser Free Trade Hall where we played our first gig. There was cause for celebration in some ways. Of, uh, uh, something did, something magical did happen there uh, two years previously. And, um, and so it was worthwhile, you know, I think it made a big statement um, for Manchester music at that time. And um, uh, the, the, the first time we played there, people, um, you know, claim, you know, millions of people claim to be there at the gig. I think there's about 200, but um, it did make a big statement and um, it, it, it's well remembered that. So it, it, it was worthwhile going back and doing that. And um, yeah, that, that video captures some of the sort of atmosphere that was around at that time, you know. Um, it was basic and sloppy, um, but you know, out of that came a lot of things. Don't gob at me. One, two, three, four. I'm in love with that. Been like this before. I'm in love with that. This time's true, I'm sure. Find a find a line, they wonder. I've been hurt so many times before. So my darling, I will never leave you. It's 
The harmonies is one of our, you know, distinctive traits, I think. Um, all those O's and R's, you know, they, they crop up on, on a lot of those early, early uh, hit singles. Um, it, it's just, you know, like a natural thing that develops. Um, it, it, it just seemed to fill in space because the music's so minimal, you know. It's, uh, these, these O's started coming out and then the R's, you know. <laughs> the pain and the angst of, oh, ah, you know. But um, it's, it's like classic background harmonies looking back. At, at the time, it just seemed like when we, these songs were coming up, um, they just seemed to sit right, you know. We didn't really sit down and think, well, we'll, we'll have to find out, you know, a harmony with that, you know, and, uh, you know, things are going to be difficult. They just sort of seem to flow in, and, and with all the, all those kind of hits at the time, it, they, they're just seated right, you know. It's a classic pop, I think. Ever Fallen In Love, some people say it's got the longest title of a popular song. I don't think it has really, but its true title is Ever Fallen In Love With Someone You Shouldn't Have Fallen In Love With. And it had lots of brackets in to make it a bit more mathematical. Um, it was our biggest hit. It got to number 12, but in, in people's hearts, I think it got to uh, number one, and we'll stay there for quite a long time. One, two, three, four. You disturb my natural emotions You make me feel I'm done I'm hurt and I'm hurt If I start a commotion I run the risk of losing you And that's worse Never fall in love with someone Never fall in love with In the future, unless we find out who's to play, what a shame. I'm a kind of woman, but I'm a stronger, unless we realize we are the same. Have a fun in love with someone, have a fun in love. You make me feel I'm done to hurt and I'm hurt and If I start a commotion I'll only end up losing you and that's worse Have a fun in love with someone Have a fun in love with someone Have a fun in love with someone Fall in love with. Fall in love with. Have a fall in love with someone you 
I remember writing the skeleton for that in um, my dad's bedroom. There's a, an old acoustic guitar there. And I sat on the edge of my dad's bed. And um, this horrible old acoustic guitar out of tune and everything. And um, I sort of come up with the music and had this chorus promises. And um, I was going to make it kind of like a political song, you know, like a real punky thing. And um, I had this chorus promises, but I didn't have the sort of verses, or I'd written a few ideas down. And we were making demos at the time in the studio, and uh, for the time being, I was singing like the melody and stuff. I'll make a cup of tea of my own, you know. I hate everybody or whatever it was going to be. It was just like this rough idea, and um, as I was doing that, you know, um, Pete was in the uh, control room, and he started writing down some some verses for it, and. Um, that's one of the sort of classic situations for our songs that we collaborated on was that it would be like, you know, I would have the sort of music and a chorus and uh, he'd write the verses, you know. And, uh, you know, I haven't done Fast Cars as well, but um, Promises was going to be a political song and um, he made it more of a personal romantic song, you know. But that's, that's the way the chemistry is, you know. We had to change, I bet you say. Lucy, it was filmed in a recording studio because uh, of the, the VU meters in that studio where Buscotch used to do demos uh, with uh, a different kind to most others, where they had got coloured lights which flashed around, and so we thought that looked good on a video. Um, so we uh, recorded the, the track there uh, after we recorded Promises. Um, it, was, um, it was the end of a long day. And, uh, and the song's really about uh, somebody who learns of the death of a loved one through a condolence card.
everybody's happy nowadays. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the performance could be taken two ways. Um, uh, we, 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 we were talking about money backstage and about having a, a wheelbarrow full of money and setting it on fire in the street and saying that's all money's worth, really. Um, and, and uh, you know, wondering how people would react if you had this wheelbarrow with it all burning away. And, it, you know, is it a waste or is that what money is, really? There was those kind of questions going around. And um, so Pete uh, put about eight pounds in his pocket and uh, went on and, you know, did the performance with this uh, uh, sticking out. And uh, that caused a bit of, a, of, a, of a, an outrage by certain uh, members of the public who thought that I was flaunting the, the fact that I had lots and lots of money um, by displaying eight pounds. In some ways, it was showing that, uh, it was showing that money is, uh, is just a fashion accessory. And instead of, uh, it's, 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 instead of going out and buying a better jacket, I enhance the value of my own. Why right now at number 29 in the charts, the latest sound from Buzzcocks. Everybody's happy nowadays. Harmony in my head, yes. Um, I think it's one of the most aggressive Buzzcock songs in its delivery. Um, I was sort of uh, did it in a kind of James Joyce Ulysses style, all that cinematic imagery, and uh, it, there felt a lot of physicality about it. Just you know, like a Jackson Pollock painting. It, I think it was important to get that feel across, um, particularly at the time. Even though it was quite relevant, you know, that that anger and aggression. And I put a million words in there, um, so there's sort of plenty to go at. And um, I used to, uh, you know, I, 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 that's my style. You know, that's the difference between me and Pete, I guess. You know, uh, harmonies like Ulysses and like Ever Fall in Love's like a Mills and Boone thing. You know, not to put that down, but that's how. That's that's the difference between us. You know, I, um, 
it, it, it complements what Pete does, you know, and uh, vice versa. Uh, but yeah, you know, I was ag aggressive. I'd smoke 20 cigarettes before I'd do a vocal like that. There was lots of other songs I did like that as well at the time, you know, and um, um, so, so, seeing it on Jukebox Jury where they all voted it a hit, I think it was because, you know, Buscox had had a few hits. Um, otherwise, if it had been an unknown band, it wouldn't have got through, I don't think. They would have all said a miss, you know. But um, Using the vehicle at that stage, you know, to, to, to really punk it up, because we'd, we'd had a couple of pop hits, and it was like, you know, let, let's, let's kick it in even harder now. Let's, let's go for it with harmony in my head, you know. Manchester and Salford, three cheers. It's the Buscox. Thank you very much. Three singles which we released, parts one, two, and three, all had funny symbols on. You know, the idea with those was that we wanted to get away from doing A sides and B sides because we thought all our songs were equally as good. Uh, so I said, Well, just don't put anything. She said, Yes, but you need to have something in order to tell the people at the record plant which side to stick the labels on. So I said, uh, Well, instead of having A and B, let's have um, the different symbols. So we, had, we chose a triangle. And then I think the other th ones were the uh, Zena cards for ESP type uh, research, where they had um, the three wavy lines, uh, a square, um, circle, star. As, as to whether or not it, it actually worked, uh, I don't think so in some ways, because we used to notice that there were, instead of using A and B, there was uh, different letters appearing on the matrix numbers of the records, which was uh, Q and R and S and T. <laughs> so instead of using A and B sides, we actually had uh, P and Q sides.
Everything was part of uh, our only Saturday morning TV that we did was a program called Fun Factory. Um, all the uh, s- uh, the emphasis was definitely on fun, with all the presenters dressed up as uh, as whatever, and all the cameramen dressed up as animals and things, and loads of kids running around, which was uh, quite disconcerting at the time because we'd all been out uh, drinking the night before. Getting up at early on Saturday morning was a hard thing to do. There was a band on before us called uh, the Barra- Barracudas, and. Um, they were sort of running around, but it, it looked a bit phony to me. It was like this, this sort of a synthetic idea of how to, you know, but it's exciting little pop band. And uh, initially on that one, um, I was just going to sort of stay rooted to the spot because I couldn't bo- be bothered with the programme, really, you know. Um, and I thought, well, let's show these kiddies how it's done, really. <laughs>
Muscox sadly came to an end in 1981, on March the 6th, when I left and everybody else went off and doing other things. Uh, we all did like a bit of solo work, um, but went off and did all the other things that life entails one does before one dies. And then uh, in 1989, due to a popular um, uh, interest, we got back together to do a tour of America, just just a tour of America. And then it was just a tour of, uh, of Britain and then just a tour of Australia and Japan. That was the first world tour. And we're currently uh, in the middle of doing our second world tour. And we're still doing songs like Autonomy, um, as well as sort of introducing new stuff. But um, the great thing about it, all the songs still sound as fresh as ever. I think we created our own sort of buzzcocks world, really. Um, sort of insular from the general music business. Uh, we managed to do it, um, you know, in the way we intended to, really, and didn't get sucked into the sort of music uh, business side of it too much. It was all, you know, in one way an innocent thing, you know, and uh, it was allowed to breathe like that. And uh, you can tell that from everything we did because it wasn't like a, a show business act. It was uh, just, you know, four blokes from Manchester getting up and uh, expressing how they feel, you know. Anyone could do it, and uh, that's what we proved, really. You know, anyone can do it. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, th th that's the great thing about it. It's, it's a, a natural raw energy that hasn't been tamed yet, you know. The lion's still roaring, I think. I always remember that uh, before the demise of communism, the Russian government always used to say that uh, their music uh, corrupted the minds of the young, and I hope that we've helped in some small way to do that. Yeah, I mean, if, well, if we had a chance to do it all again, uh, I don't think we could do it any differently, really. <laughs> Nobody could do as bad as that. <laughs>